What's up, guys? It is Sunday morning. It's like 5.15 in the morning, and I don't really know why I'm up, but I'm up. I'm reading articles from the past week. I'm studying, and I'm watching videos. Um, as a lot of you guys know, I just passed my real estate exam, so I'm getting started back in the business. It's been a little over 20 years since I was in real estate, so I'm pretty excited to get back into it. Um, but along those lines, I've been watching videos for beginning realtors nowadays, and all the stuff I'm seeing is basically just one long advertisement to get you to buy somebody's product at the end of the video they always happen to have some new product or some new program or some new cd dvd downloadable thing that you can buy that gives you more information so i'm not going to do that i'm just going to shoot straight with you i'm not selling anything this is all free um i was going to wait on this series and do it as i kind of got rolling a little bit faster into the, into uh selling real estate but i have 25 years of sales experience uh, I've worked at the highest levels and I've worked around the world. So I'm putting together my successful sales series and we're going to start that today. Um, this one is geared more towards people going into real estate, but you can apply these concepts to really any job as it is. But five things to do before you get into real estate. My five things. All right, number one, and we'll go into detail after I list them. Okay. Number one, do your research. I can't emphasize strongly enough how important that is. Okay. Number two, know your costs, right? Real estate's not cheap. Know your costs. Number three, find a broker that you like, okay? Highly important that you find a broker that you like. Number four, be honest and true with yourself. That's something that most people don't do, and it's why we have an 80-plus percent attrition rate in real estate. Be honest and true to yourself, okay? That's number four. And number five, the last one, know what this job really is i think most people have a really bad idea of what we do because they watch these tv shows and they think this is kind of like the the house flippers or million dollar listing or any of these crazy reality shows real real estate actual real estate is not like any of that stuff okay so let's get into detail on these things all right so number one do your research okay what i mean by that is look into what places are offering the classes around you. Every state has different programs. Some are at colleges, some are online. Personally, I did mine online. I loved it because it let me learn at my own pace. But look into where the classes are held. <clears throat> see if you can get a hold of some of the textbooks so you can look at the information and see if it's even interesting to you. The reason you do your research up front is to make sure you like this business, to make sure that you have an interest in things that you're going to actually be doing every single day. A lot of people get into real estate and get their license, but they hate houses. It's absolute insanity, unless they're going to go into the commercial world, in which case, totally different thing. But if you're going to be a residential real estate uh, sales rep or a re residential real estate agent, sorry, pardon me, if you're going to be a residential real estate agent, you need to really like real estate and you need to really like people. Those are the two things we do. Okay, so do your research. Check out the books. Okay, talk to some of the professors if you can. Uh, if it's at a college, you can always send an email and ask a professor about their classes. How often do they meet? Does it work within your schedule? Find out everything you can. Talk to local real estate agents. Okay, When I was getting ready to do my classes, before I started my first class, I made at least 10 agent contacts. All right? I did it for a couple reasons. Number one, I wanted to put my name out there so that now that I have my license, I can call those same people back and say, hey, remember me? We talked last year. Let's go get a cup of coffee and get to know each other a little bit. And that's going to help you become acclimated within your market. But more importantly, you want to ask them what it's like. What's your market like? Do they like what they're doing? Do they hate it? Uh, would they recommend it to a friend? Would they recommend it to a relative? What's an average day for them like? How much time do they spend prospecting? How much time do they spend doing closings? How much time do they spend on the phone? How long do they actually work? I think a lot of people will be shocked to find out a realtor's day can be 10 to 12 hours long easily plus the time they spend at night doing emails, answering text messages, and those things, okay? So do your research, that's number one. <clears throat> number two, this one may even be more than, important than number one, depending on your situation. Know what your costs are. Know your costs, all right? Now, taking the classes alone could be four, five, six hundred dollars, whether it's at a college or online, it could be four, five, six hundred dollars. It doesn't, you know, it's, it, it's different for everybody, but let's just say it's it, let's say it's four hundred dollars for the classes, right? Licensing could be about a hundred dollars, right? Joining your local board could be anywhere from two hundred to four hundred dollars, 
um, insurance, errors and omissions, you have to have e &O insurance. The, the brokerage that I'm with, we have a no deductible e &O, but our cost is $600 for the year. So some places are a little bit lower, they're 300, 400, 500. It all depends on your market and depends on you know what you have as a deductible. Nevertheless, you're looking at a few hundred dollars and these are all things that have to be paid up front. Um, the cost of your lockbox key, your lockbox code, if you want to be uh, able to access lockbox homes, which a lot of them still are. You know, that's in their fee. And then the fees you wouldn't normally think about, okay? Gas. You drive a lot. So you have to have a reliable car. If you don't, you're going to need to get one. If you do have a reliable car, keep in mind you're going to put a lot of miles on that car. So if you're in a lease, you could end up owing a lot of money on your lease, all right? Besides that, gasoline, huge cost of gas. In addition to that, a lot of brokerage are, a lot of brokerages actually want you to carry a higher level of insurance because you'll be potentially taking clients around with you in your car. So you're going to have people in your car with you. Your broker may want you and they may ask you to carry a million dollar or two million dollar rider to ensure that everybody is covered safely in case of an accident. Okay, costs you don't think about. Know your costs. Office supplies. If you're working with a broker that gives them to you, you're in luck because not a lot of brokers do and a lot of them charge you for every single thing. You could be paying five cents a copy for copies at your broker's house or at your brokerage house. Um, but if you have them at your house, at your own home, think about paper, pencils, pens, paper clips, staples, folders, all these different things. They sound small, but they add up. I mean, one, one ream of 500 sheets of paper, you'll go through that easily in a month. That could be eight, nine, ten dollars if you're getting good quality paper. So think about your added costs. Think about all the costs that you're going to have involved in getting into real estate. Okay, so that's number two. Know your costs. All right. Number three, <clears throat> so important. Find a broker you like. All right. Now, what I mean by that, before I started taking my classes, I interviewed brokers. I interviewed six different brokers around my area because I wanted to get to know what each different brokerage was like to see where I felt like I fit in the best. This is going to be a career for you, okay? So what that means is you want to find a broker who's going to help you to become better at the what the, at the job you're doing, okay? What this is is you want to find a broker who's going to help you expand your business and grow your client base and do it all effectively and do it all the right way. Someone who's going to be there that you can bounce ideas off of, someone who's going to be there for support. Okay, this is not a job. You're not just going to show up and do your nine to five or your eight to four, whatever the case is. Find a broker you get along with. Find a broker you can talk very comfortably with. And that person is going to have a big impact on your career. So it's important that you find somebody that you really like. Okay, so find a broker. Um, number four, be honest with yourself. Be true and honest with yourself. So few people do this uh, and they do it all the time is they get an idea about something, you know, and I keep going back to this TV thing because you don't know how many people I've talked to since I've gotten back into real estate who have said to me, oh, you're going to be like one of those million dollar listing guys. No, I I'm definitely, definitely not going to be like one of those guys. I'm not going to be one of those guys. Even though I live in a top 10 market nationally, that's not my goal. Um, I don't want to be like that. And that's not even real real estate anyway. So be true to yourself. It means Take a look at your strengths and weaknesses. You know, write them down. It'll help you if you write them down. But be honest about what it is. Write down your strengths. Write down your weaknesses. Analyze them. Okay. Do those strengths and weaknesses lend you to being a good advocate for a client? Okay. Do those strengths and weaknesses line up with what we actually do? And that goes right into what number five is: is know what we actually do for a living. Real estate agents are not salespeople. Okay. A lot of realtors are going to go crazy hearing that. It's true. We're not salespeople. Sales, by definition, is the active promotion or exchange of commercially viable goods, products, and services. Okay. Yes, we are selling a product, but we're giving a service. Okay. We're not selling our services. We're giving our services. Every client you have, you have an obligation to them. You're the agent for the client. All right. That's different than being a sales rep. A sales rep's job is to convince a buyer to buy something they may not have wanted to buy or they may not have been willing to pay for in totality. All right, so what I mean by that is most commission sales jobs, uh, let's take a car, a car salesman, their job is to get the most possible money they can from the buyer, right? So 
Same thing, let's take jewelry sales, all right? If you're looking to buy a diamond, that jeweler's job is to get the most money out of that buyer that they can, okay? Your job is not to get the most money out of your buyer that you can. It's to get the least money for your buyer to have to pay to the seller to get the property. We're not talking people into something they don't wanna do. We're helping them find the right fit, okay? You have a seller that has a beautiful property. You have a buyer that's looking for a beautiful property. If the buyer's needs fit with that property, then that's what we'll show. That's what we'll try to get for them at the cheapest price possible because that's your job, okay? So it's different than what conventional sales would be. Our job is service. Our job is client services. Our job is client advocacy. Our job is to take care of our clients no matter what. It means that some days you're going to be the whipping boy. Some days you're going to be the tackling dummy and the punching dummy. Some days you're going to be the person that gives a giant hug, right? Buying a home is the biggest purchase anybody can have. Your job is to be there for them throughout that process. And it can be scary. It can be exciting. It can be aggravating. It could be intoxicating. It's an up and down. It's a roller coaster. And your job is to be there through all those hills and all those valleys. So we're not traditional salespeople. We are in the, in the realm of sales, but we're real estate agents. And that's why that terminology is being used a lot more today than it was 20, 20, 25, 30 years ago. We're agents, we're not salespeople, okay? So know what this job is, know what this is all about, and know what you're getting yourself into. Is it something you wanna do? Think about all those things, analyze those five things, and see how you come out. And if it's all still positive, you wanna do real estate, I think it's a fantastic career. You're gonna love it. If you have any questions for me, put them in the, in the comment section or email me directly. Like the video and remember to subscribe. I'm gonna have a ton of cool stuff coming out. So I hope you guys all check out all my videos. Thanks for watching.